Hey friends, Pastor Kim. We are in day number 39 of our 66 books in 66 days. And we are in the book of Malachi, which means we are in the very last book of the Old Testament. So tomorrow we will be, be we will begin the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But tonight we are in the uh, prophecy, the minor prophet of Malachi, and the purpose of this very last book of Scripture in the Old Testament is to confront the people with their sins and to restore their relationship with God. And so if we look at the timeline, um, we find that in 538 B.C., first, first exiles are returning to Jerusalem. Uh, in 536, temple reconstruction begins. In 520, which we talked about a, a few nights ago, Haggai and Zechariah become prophets who begin to encourage the continuation and completion of the temple, which is completed in 516 uh, B.C. In 458, Ezra comes to Jerusalem. In 445, Nehemiah comes to Jerusalem. And in 430... 430 Malachi becomes a prophet and the uh, the setting here is that Malachi Haggai and Zechariah um, were prophets to the southern kingdom of Judah Haggai and Zechariah rebuked the people for their failure to rebuild the temple Malachi confronted them with their neglect of the temple and the false and profane worship so really what we find out here is that um, that this that the temple had been built for some 100 years, 100 years, uh, and there had been neglect. The people uh, finally got it done and started living life, uh, temple life, but then there was failure. There was failure of the people once again. Uh, chapters 1 and 2, uh, the beginning of chapter 2, talk about the sinfulness of the priests Heaven forbid, right? The sinfulness of the priests. Uh, chapters 2 and 3, the first part of chapter 3, talk about the sinfulness of the people. Uh, and then the final section of the book talks about the faithful remnant, the faithfulness of a few. So what we find out, again, is that, that sin has this trickle-down um, uh, ability that, that it starts with leadership and then it gets and it, and it infects the people so the priests were sinful therefore the people did not have good leadership did, did not have good faith leaders to guide them and so they themselves uh, become sinful the key verse that rises up out of this book of Malachi is uh, chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 which says Surely the day is coming, it'll burn like a furnace. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing on its wings, and you will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. I have always loved that verse because if you've ever been out and watched calves being released or calves just having a good old time not like the cows the youngness of the calf being released jumping around and celebrating uh, just freedom life and so this is really what the book of malachi kind of leads us into uh, it moves from god's love to a recognition of hey god's love is always going to be there no matter how sinful we are so the sin of the priest the sin of the people is not going to stop the power of god's love and the lord's coming god's love for his people even when they ignore or disobey him his love is there and he has great blessings to bestow on those who are faithful his love never ends it never fails um, Malachi singled out the priest for condemnation. They were doing wrong. They needed to know that they were doing wrong. They knew what God required, yet their sacrifices had become unworthy and their service was insincere. There was not, not any sincerity inside of their being for faith living purity. Um, Malachi goes as far to say that they were lazy, they were arrogant, and they were extremely insensitive. They had a casual attitude toward worship itself and worshiping God, 
um, and observing God's standards, uh, everything that they had been taught in the priesthood had begun to fall away because they started getting a taste of pride. Worldly pride started entering in. And again, the sin of the priests lead to the sin of the people. The people had not learned a lesson from the exile, nor had they listened to all of the prophets. The priests themselves were not listening to the prophets. And we must understand that priests and prophets were different um, offices of, of uh, service in that time. Um, this even goes to, you know, the, when it talks about the sin of the people, it, it lists those sins. Men were callously divorcing their faithful wives to marry younger pagan women. Um, this was against God's law because it disobeyed the commands about marriage itself and it threatened the religious training of the children. Pride had hardened the hearts of God's people. And so um, God's love for his faithful people is demonstrated in by the gift of the Messiah, the Messiah coming. The Messiah will lead the people to the realization uh, that all their hopes, all their dreams, all that they had lived for uh, would be fulfilled. The day of the Lord's coming is going to be a day of comfort and healing for the faithful remnant, for the faithful few, and a day of judgment for those who reject him. So then we st again have the pendulum swinging, whether whether you are obedient or whether you are disobedient. That is the way that judgment is going to be laid out for us. And so as we move into this book, um, you know, this is the last book, uh, four chapters of uh, admonishing the unfaithful, admonishing the priest, um, the blemished sacrifices that were given, you know, way back in, in Cain and Abel's day, God wanted unblemished sacrifices, the best of our produce, the best of our finest um, that we have raised up for God. And yet here we were, are, in all this time of the Old Testament, um, sacrifices becoming uh, that were blemished and inappropriate to uh, give to God. Um, the day of judgment was going to come because the people were robbing God. Um, the day was going to come. Um, and in chapter 3, beginning in verse 6, um, the section about robbing God, it says, I, the Lord, do not char change. I, the Lord, do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me. And I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings? Oh, you are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your field will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. And so, um, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and I'm going to offer you blessings. I'm going to offer you blessings, and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit. Um, the fruit is going to be there. It's going to be fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply. The nations will call you blessed. Everybody's going to see how blessed you are because you are my faithful. Praising the Lord for that. And so, uh, this section talks about giving a tenth. Uh, the ancient people observed the practice of tithing, that is, giving a tenth of their earning, whether it was um, produce or their, their, their gift of building, whatever they, they could do. And so Malachi is reminding the people of God uh, to the command to tithe. Um, that's important for us to remember today, too, the importance of tithing and giving our best to God, uh, tithing, our, tithing our abilities to God not only our finances, but our abilities to God. Um, and then the last section of 
the uh, book of Malachi, uh, chapter 3, beginning in verse 16 to the end of chapter 4, it talks really about the faithful few. Uh, God's treasured possessions are those uh, who are faithful to him. Um, this is fulfilling the promise that God made to the covenant people, the covenant of God, way back in Exodus chapter 19. And even according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, believers are God's treasured possession. And so we have to, we have to see uh, who we are in, in Christ, in God. Uh, and then we have to purify ourselves to make sure that we are living in accordance with who God needs us to be. Um, it also talks about Elijah in chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Elijah, one of the greatest prophets who ever lived. Uh, his story is recorded again in uh, 1 Kings 17 through 2 Kings 2. Um, and when Malachi passed away, uh, the voice of God's prophets was silenced. And for 400 years, the world, even the, even the remnant of God's people, was not hearing the voice of God through prophets. But then a prophet would come like Elijah, right? A prophet would come like Elijah, the herald of Christ's coming. Um, in uh, Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, or else I will come and strike the land with a curse. Wow, what? <laughs> you know, um, we want to be God's treasured possession in the day when God acts. And so the prophet the prophet like Elijah, we find out when we turn the page uh, to the Gospels. This prophet was John the Baptist who prepared people's hearts for the coming of Jesus by urging the people to repent of their sins, to be washed. But a greater one would be coming, right? Christ's coming would bring about unity and peace. And, and it has, in a sense, brought about unity and peace. But um, there's, there's still only a remnant where the rest of the world is living outside of unity and peace because they're not seeking, faithfully seeking, the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. The, the struggle is going to be there. If we're not seeking God, the struggle is going to be there. You know, and I don't think it really matters what religion we are. If we're not seeking that higher power to guide us in the ways of righteousness, then we are not ever going to find unity and peace in where we live today. Um, and so Malachi closes his message by pointing to the great and final day of judgment. For those who are committed to God, judgment will be a day of joy. We've talked about that. We talked about it a few days ago, that, that pendulum swinging. Uh, if you are following God and living in the purity of, of his righteousness, then the day of judgment is going to be a day of judgment for you, a day of joy for you. But if you're living outside of the obedience of God, if you're not clothed in the righteousness of God through Christ, our example, then that day of judgment is going to be a, a day of doom. Um, those who have ignored, who have ignored God will be stubble be stubble to the burned up uh, and that is in in uh, Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 surely the day is coming it will burn like a furnace all the arrogant and every evil doer will be stubble and that day that is coming will set them on fire says the Lord Almighty not a root or a branch will be left of them but for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. Praise the Lord for the healing that is going to come. We trust, we hold that as the remnant of God's faithful. That's what the book of Malachi is reminding us. The remnant of God's faithful must stay faithful, even through the hardest suffering. That is where the books of, uh, of First and Second Peter come in. The suffering of, of the collected community and the suffering of the individual. That God is going to see us through that. And God is going to breathe that new life, that fresh life into us beyond the suffering to receive that gift that is awaiting for us, that a gift of eternal life. 
uh, to help the people prepare for the day of judgment, God would send a prophet like Elijah who would prepare the way for Jesus. The New Testament begins with this prophet calling the people to turn from their sins and to turn toward God, to make a commitment. And in order to make such a commitment to God, demands that we sacrifice on our part the things of the world. Um, but it's worth it. I'm sure that you can shout out an amen that it is worth it. It is worth it to, to give those sacrifices and to give the best of ourselves to God. Um, for all that we have in the Old Testament, God's word, all that we have, all the prophets who have been speaking to us, even today as we are New Testament Christians, we have to understand the Old Testament's purpose for the prophecy and the visions, for us to stand firm and to trust that we don't want to be like the wandering, wayward Israelites that struggled much of their existence, so much so that they struggled themselves out of existence. <laughs> they became the Jewish nation, a different nation, under God, seeking the Messiah and waiting, still waiting for the Messiah. And yet we as Christians, those who follow Christ, those who follow Jesus, truly believe with every fiber of our being that it is Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, who came to Bethlehem that we read about in the New Testament. And so tomorrow we'll begin our reading in the New Testament. Praise the Lord. I hope you've enjoyed these last 39 books the Old Testament coming together and the prophecy of Christ of raising up a people for God. I believe that God today is still raising up a people for his goodness, for his will. Will you be in his will? Will you seek to be in the will of God? Praying that you're well. Take care, friends. I'll see you in the New Testament. Blessings and peace to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. See you soon. Bye for now.